All right, so dogs pretty much come from the canine species. The canine species pretty much comes from wolves and wild dogs. So over time, certain dogs have lasted and certain dogs have been domesticated and dogs would become more and more domesticated through the involvement of humans. And that domestication would eventually lead us to today where we have these dogs in our homes. Because these dogs are from the canine species, we wanna make sure that we keep that in perspective, understand that they are pack animals and they are predatorial animals. And a lot of times, these dominant tendencies that the dogs tend to have can interfere with our day-to-day -day lives through dominance in the household. If you're dealing with a pack animal that comes from a pack species, then you have to establish yourself as that pack leader. And a pack leader is not gonna be overly dominant. It doesn't need to do that. All it needs to do is just stay at that respectable level and pack members actually appreciate that pack leader for being the strength. So if you're having dog problems and a dog is being aggressive with new people and aggressive with the neighbor's dog, then that behavior is just going to snowball every day if it's being reinforced and not being addressed. Now, a lot of times some people will try to say redirect the dog or try to avoid the problem, but that's just like avoiding the bully at school every day. You're gonna face it, okay? So you cannot run away from your problems. You have to make sure that you establish the leadership that you need. And there's times where you're gonna have to make these small corrections to make sure we're appropriately addressing these issues. So a dog that is being aggressive, a lot of times comes from insecurity. And a lot of times that dog is looking for that pack leader to be the security so they don't feel it necessary to become aggressive as well. On the flip side, you have dogs that are being dominant and aggressive because it's not being addressed by the higher member. And what's happening is that behavior will start to snowball and create more and more problems. And a lot of times when people are under correcting it, they will actually throw gas on the fire and create more of the problem. An example of throwing gas in the fire will be if you ignore the problems or simply just walk away, your dog's gonna walk away successful and that behavior is gonna continue to persist. So some of the behaviors to watch out for if you're dealing with a dominant dog is a dog that is overly confident, kind of pushes you around, maybe growls at other dogs, maybe uh, kind of mounts up on other dogs when he's in a social setting, a dog that might be a little bit overly dominant with other dogs in play and roughhousing. Those are simple, simple characteristics of say a dominant dog. Then you have submissive dogs that are gonna be a little insecure. You'll see they're more in an avoidance behavior. Their body language will show that they're a little bit scared and they're trying to get away. And a lot of times it's a fight or flight situation. So if they can't run, they can only fight. And that's when you get the aggression from the nervous behavior. So the Cali K9 system works like this. We tap into the dog's dopamine. We want to get the dog excited. We want the dog to have fun with the process. So we start off with lots and lots of rewards. The rewards consist of three things. We have food, we have praise, and we have toys. Basically, we have our food motivation, which can vary in different levels. So you get everything from the dog's kibble all the way up to a very high value piece of meat. Then you have praise reward. You can simply just good boy, or you can totally drown him in love, right? So there's different levels of praise. Then you have the toy. You have the toy that you can just let the dog get, or you can make the dog miss a couple times, and then you can throw it. And each one of those levels will create more value for the toy for the dog. So ultimately, the dog is working for its rewards. He really wants what you have, and you're really making the treat valuable every single day. We're going to reinforce the behaviors that we like and we're going to lure the dog with these uh, different rewards and reward them through sustainment reward as well as release reward. So what that means is when a dog does something, we're going to reward it. And then we're going to tell him there's a termination reward which allows him to finish the exercise. So a lot of times I see dogs, they'll start the behavior and someone might lure them, but then the dog releases themselves and the dog pretty much dictates when the exercise is done. So we like to start the behavior as well as conclude the behavior. Then we're gonna start proofing the behavior. So when we start teaching the behavior, we're gonna teach behaviors like the sit and the down and the stand and the focus. But eventually, dogs need to be proofed and that means the distractions need to start coming in. So what we need to do is, is the dog will learn that maintaining focus gets that reward and gets that release reward. And what's gonna happen is when the value is there and a dog shall look the other way, you'll simply just give it a marker, no, and then the dog will see that that's not a desired behavior, the focus is the desired behavior, or the sit is a desired behavior, and then we release that. So basically, this is just like going to a class, but until you take your quiz or your test, you don't know if you really know the subject. So the system is all about teaching and then proofing. 
Now, then you have securing, and securing is going to be the life of the dog, maintaining these sessions. Keep doing your 15 minutes a day and keeping that consistency and making sure that you never fall off as a pack leader so your dog doesn't fall off with his behavior. This keeps a great communication system between you two and it makes sure the harmony is perfect between you and your dog. All right, so the importance of 15 minutes a day is that we're keeping that consistency there. And that's what the securing phase is all about. Setting boundaries is actually going to get your dog to love you more. They need that structure. They need that stimulation. And my Cali Canine system is all about teaching you that exact thing. So we really want you guys to understand the value of the consistency. Yes, we can train your dog and send him home, but your dog will unravel like a mummy if he does not get that securing 15 minutes a day. That's just part of the program. So the key is here, let's get your dog motivated. Let's keep him motivated. Let's make sure you're the pack leader by being the funnest thing in the room. You're the party, you're it's everything, and the dog will desire you over everything because you've built that in your relationship. So keep doing this Cali Canine communication and we'll see you at the top.